Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with returning guest Derek Wallace. He's joining us here as a vice president and global dengue program head at Takeda. He's going to discuss the approval of the company's dengue vaccine, Qdenga. Welcome back. How have you been, Derek? Uh, it's a real pleasure to be back, Neil. Thanks very much. For those who may not be familiar with you, you are a contributor. Give us a refresher as to your professional background and your current role at Takeda. Tell us a bit about who you are. Right. Um, well, I'm medically trained uh, from Australia, and I've been working on dengue vaccine development for the past 14 years now, uh, most of that time with Takeda vaccines. Uh, and my current role is the program lead for the vaccine candidates, which means I have overall accountability for the development of the vaccine globally. Well, before you give some details about this uh, new dengue vaccine, what is dengue? Dengue is a flavivirus. It's a a virus that's transmitted by mosquitoes. Um, There are four dengue serotypes, and each of those serotypes can cause disease from uh, a spectrum of asymptomatic infection right through to to causing death. Um, It's a disease which maps with the uh, transmission areas of, of the mosquito vector, um, so it's principally a disease of the tropical and subtropical world. Um, but it can spread uh, to wherever the mosquito is. So southern parts of Europe, southern parts of the U.S. Um, uh, it can also have local transmission of dengue. If a person contracts dengue, they cannot transmit it to another person. It is transmissible only through mosquito bites? That's correct. So when somebody has dengue, uh, it causes a viremia uh, in their blood. If a mosquito were to feed on somebody who had a dengue viremia, that mosquito would become infected. Mm. And one of the challenges with this particular virus is the mosquito vector will feed on multiple people. It's quite a, a nervous feeder. So one mosquito can actually cause quite a lot of damage by, by infecting you know, six or seven other individuals. So this new approval of Qdenga, give us some insight into the background, some details about Takeda's new vaccine and the significance of the approval. So we had a very comprehensive uh, clinical development program for our dengue vaccine candidate. Uh, we had more than 28,000 people uh, in our studies in 18 different studies. Our key study was a, a large efficacy study, which was actually the largest uh, study ever conducted by Takeda uh, in 20,000 children aged between 4 and 16 across eight different countries. And we followed these children up, uh, contacting them or their parents every week to see if they had a fever, which could be due to dengue. And that study has shown that the vaccine prevents about 60% of dengue fever across four and a half years. But really importantly, it presents, it prevents about 85% of hospitalized dengue. Uh, and really it's the uh, clinical need for hospitalization that causes a lot of the burden of, of dengue. Um, So we were very pleased that uh, this vaccine has such a big impact uh, on hospitalization, and and we hope that that translates into a big impact on the global burden of dengue. Now, this particular approval is, as you say, in one particular area. Yes, correct. So um, we've actually submitted our our, uh, vaccine for consideration to a number of different dengue endemic countries and into Europe. Um, the first country to approve is Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Um, they've approved the vaccine for use in children aged six and above uh, with a limit of 45 for, for adults. Um, and this is really quite significant because Indonesia, firstly, is a big country, but it's a country that, that's very much impacted by dengue. Uh, Asia has the m- most dengue globally, and Indonesia is one of the countries with the highest uh, uh, number of cases of dengue in Asia. Do you plan on submitting approval uh, applications in the U.S. as well, or have you already done so? Uh, We will be submitting in the U.S. uh, in in the coming weeks. What is the incidence of of dengue in Indonesia? It's a very large country, as you said, but who is affected? Dengue is is principally a disease of children in places where Mm. dengue is very common. Uh, there are, as I mentioned, there are four serotypes of dengue, and although each serotype can cause severe disease, it's most common to get severe disease on your second exposure to dengue. Um, So if you get any individual serotype, you're essentially protected for life against that serotype, but you're at a greater risk of severe disease for your second exposure to a different dengue serotype. So the the, uh, burden of dengue really depends on that force of infection. In a place where the, the virus is transmitted a lot, the burden is in younger children. 
in a place uh, like Singapore where the burden is, is less, the burden is more in, in young adults. Now, it's my understanding that this approval was based on uh, some 36-month data, but you've recently presented some longer-term data. What does the new data show? Yeah, this was a, a, a very um, you know, fantastic surprise to us. We, we saw that the vaccine was still performing really well right up to that last 18 months of the four and a half years of follow-up. Um, typically, we might expect a vaccine uh, to reduce in its efficacy over time. Um, but we saw uh, even in that last 18 months of follow-up, um, we saw a, a more than a 90% reduction in hospitalization due to dengue. Um, so we, we do see some uh, some consistent efficacy of, of prevention of dengue across time. What's next for Takeda's dengue program, in your opinion? So we have two, two things that we're really thinking about. One is expanding the countries that in which the vaccine is available. Uh, we have a number of dengue endemic countries that are currently reviewing the file. Um, in Malaysia and Singapore, for example, in Asia, Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, in uh, Latin America, um, as well as Europe. Um, we will be expanding that to other dengue endemic countries and also to places like the U.S. I think the second most, uh, second important thing that we need to do is work out how to use this vaccine properly. Um, you know, dengue is a, a complex disease and the epidemiology is quite variable in, uh, in countries. I, I gave an example earlier where the force of infection affects the age range most impacted by dengue. So the solutions on how best to use a vaccine, particularly in the context of things like vector control, uh, control of the mosquito vector, um, is, is going to be uh, quite quite variable across the globe. So um, our, our efforts are going to be focused on how best to use this vaccine in a, in a complex um, uh, toolkit of, of dengue prevention. Now, as you said, Kudenga is now the only dengue vaccine approved in Indonesia for use, regardless of your previous dengue exposure. And touch on the fact that you don't need pre-vaccination testing now for this particular vaccine. You know, one of the challenges in dengue vaccine development has been the, the observation that the most common time to get a severe infection is a secondary exposure. So there's something about the first exposure to one dengue serotype that makes your exposure to a different dengue serotype worse. Uh, this, the fear has been that a vaccine might replicate this, this sort of epidemiological observation. And that's actually exactly what happened with the first licensed vaccine. Um, that the vaccine uh, prevents dengue in somebody who's already had dengue, uh, but it, it can increase the risk of hospitalization in somebody who's seronegative or, or naive to dengue exposure. Um, that requires Zero testing. So, in order to vaccinate somebody with that vaccine, you need to be sure they've had dengue before. The fact that our vaccine works almost equally between the zero negative and the zero positive group in terms of overall efficacy means that that you don't need to do the screening. Um, it can be used regardless or agnostic to to dengue zero status. And just as an example, um, we saw 85 percent uh, efficacy against hospitalized dengue and zero negatives. And, and about 90% in seropositives. So in both those populations, we're seeing a big reduction in hospitalization. Well, give us a website where our listeners can learn more about dengue and about Takeda as well. Okay, so we have a number of websites. The uh, one that I would recommend for healthcare professionals is Dengue Academy. Uh, it's dengueacademy.com. Um, one that's more focused on consumer level uh, information is No Dengue, um, K N O W. And of course, um, uh, Takeda Vaccines uh, is, is also a website that provides information about uh, Takeda and, and our dengue vaccine candidates. Derek, I appreciate you returning and helping us out this morning. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, an absolute pleasure, Neil. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest Derek Wallace. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.